A soil mass is composed of small solid particles which we call the soil grains. These soil grains when depositing in a soil mass arranges themselves in a way that some amount of empty space is enclosed between them. We call these spaces voids. Water can flow through these voids. The property of the soil which permits the water or any liquid to flow through it through its voids is called permeability. Permeability is the ease with which water can flow through the soils. We have analyzed the flow of water in both isotropic and anisotropic soil and have learned to construct the flow net. Isotropic means having identical values of a property in all directions and anisotropic means different properties in different directions. Sometimes it becomes a necessity to use two different soils to make a soil structure. By two different soils we mean they have different properties like different permeability, different void ratio, different unit weights etc. In such cases the permeability of the soil changes suddenly along the flow paths and flow lines and equipotential lines of the flow net get deflected at the junction point of the two soil masses. Consequently, our flow net gets modified. The phenomena of deflection of flow lines is somewhat similar to the refraction of the light rays. We know that when light enters from the rare medium to a dense medium, it gets deflected towards the normal. Similarly, flow lines get deflected towards the normal if the flow is from a rare medium to dense medium. That means when flow is from high permeable medium to low permeable medium. While when water flows from a low permeable medium to high permeability medium, it gets deflected away from the normal. To analyze such a flow, let us begin by considering the two soils of coefficient of permeability K1 and K2 meeting each other in a soil structure. Now either K1 may be greater than K2 or it may be less than K2. We will consider both the cases one by one. Let us begin with the case 1, that is K1 is greater than K2 flow is from high permeable or a rare medium to less permeable or dense medium. In such case, the flow lines deflect towards the normal. For clarity, let us show only two flow lines. Let's mark a few points on the diagram. Let the incident angle, the angle which the flow line makes with the normal in soil 1 be alpha 1 and alpha 2 be the exit angle in soil 2. Let the equipotential lines in soil 1 be phi 1 and phi 2 and in the soil 2 here are these two. Now mark these points as A, B, C and D. The drop of head over these potential lines is delta H. Let the distance between these two equipotential lines in soil 1 is delta S1 and in soil 2 delta S2 and distance between flow lines in soil 1 is delta N1 and in soil 2 delta N2. Now assuming Darcy's law is valid for the soil element which means a soil is fully saturated and the fluid flow in the voids is laminar. We can write Velocity of fluid in soil element is equal to the permeability of that soil element times the hydraulic gradient across that soil element. Also, the discharge through such soil element will be area of its cross section multiplied by the fluid velocity. Hence, discharge through this flow channel between these two flow lines 
in soil 1 can be given as dq1 equal to area of this flow channel that is its height delta n1 and its width let's say capital B but this can also be considered as unity or 1 multiplied by permeability of soil 1 that is k1 and hydraulic gradient delta h over the distance delta s1 similarly discharge between these flow lines in soil 2 is this we can see that all the water that is coming from this channel of this soil is going through this channel of the other soil therefore both the discharges will be the same solving this we arrive at this by the diagram we can see in soil 1 if this angle is alpha 1 then this angle would be 90 minus alpha 1 and in this triangle this angle is already 90 degree so sum of these two will be 90 degree as well so if this angle is 90 minus alpha 1 then this will be alpha 1 hence the sum of them will be 90 degree also in this soil this angle is 90 degree so this will be 90 minus alpha 2 also this angle is 90 degree so this angle will be alpha 2 now using these uh, triangles we can see delta s1 by delta n1 equal to 10 alpha 1 and delta s2 by delta n2 is 10 alpha 2 substituting this in our equation we get this and uh, rearranging it gets us the relationship between the angle of flow lines with the normal and the permeabilities of the two sides. Similarly, in case 2, that is k1 is less than k2. Flow is from a low permeable or a dense medium to highly permeable or rare medium. In such a case, the flow line gets deflected away from the normal. And exit angle alpha 2 is greater than incident angle alpha 1. Using the similar procedure that we used in the first case, it can be shown that a1 by k2 is equal to 10 alpha 1 by 10 alpha 2. If the ratio of permeabilities of two soils is greater than 10, be it k1 by k2 or k2 by k1, which means one soil is a lot more permeable than the other. Then, the soil with the high permeability is assumed as an open drain that has no resistance to flow in comparison to the other soil. In such case, we only draw flow net for the soil with relatively low permeability and the flow net for the higher permeability soil need not be drawn. There is no deflection correction required at the junction point in such case. If the soil 1 is high permeability soil and soil 2 is a low permeability soil, then the joining interface itself is taken as upstream phase. Well, when if the soil 1 is a low permeability soil and the soil 2 is high permeability soil, the interface will act as discharge phase. Elementary engineering receives lots of love via beautiful comments and lovely emails. Thank you everyone for showing your love to this channel. Also thank you very much members and patrons of elementary engineering for supporting this channel monetarily. Read flow net deflection in two soil masses at elementaryengineeringlibrary.com. Links are in the description. Thank you.